Welcome to Farmhouse Fabrics and my name is Sally and I'm gonna have some assistance today from Emma in just a little bit but um, we are we're kind of gonna talk about fabric repeats today we're gonna talk about how to how to make a, a how to make a different kind of a sleeve out of your simple sleeve pattern um, we're gonna show a a pants pattern from uh, Styla, the adult part of Little Lizard King, and it's called, how do you pronounce it, Tulum, Tulum, T-U-L-U-M. I was thinking Tulum. Tulum, Tulum, that sounds, okay, that sounds better. And, and we also, we're going crazy because we're going to show some pots and pans, you know, we all got to have pots and pans, and then we have our, and we have our aprons. And so um, we're gonna get started with what are we gonna get started with, Emma? Should we get started how with? How about those linen pants? How about that? So I am about to go to the beach, and I'm gonna go to St. Simon's Island. And so I'm I'm just a real conservative kind of person, and I also have this um, this body image issue. <laughs> <laughs> and so. You know, I, I change my shirts because I stand behind this table, but I'm always You're wearing these. modest. I'm, I am. I am. I'm always wearing these same black pants, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to the beach. I can't wear black pants at the beach. At the beach. So I think I should make some pants. And Christy Newsom said, how about linen pants? And I have been admiring the, what did you say, Tulum? That's what I said. Okay, Tulum. Noel Tierney is a customer of ours and she sews for her daughter and i'm telling you she has made the cutest gr girls pants out of this pattern and um they're they're adorable and they were kind of slouchy and they have a they have a a casing here and and then i might be a fake drawstring but with elastic deep pockets and adorable really really adorable and so i've been admiring that and i thought I would I would wear something like that and Chrissy showed me like a plaid linen I'm like I cannot put a plaid linen across this hind end of mine <laughs> <laughs> that would not be pretty and so you I'm gonna try and find that repeat <laughs> <laughs> yeah find that repeat I could put the whole horizontal repeat on there <laughs> anyway I'm excited about this and so we are We've we've been cooking up a little a little plan of something we want to do, um, where we're letting all of y'all have have a vote and a choice and help us make our choice, and so we're gonna start with this this pattern and this um, the the linen pants and the question is Emma it's gonna be in our story right our Facebook and Instagram story yes it is there now so it's. Uh, okay. Right now, the question is: Do you think Sally can finish the sew in 24 hours? Yeah, that's our question. Do you think? Do you think I can finish the sew in 24 hours? And so I want you to vote, and and um, I'll try. I'll try and do whatever you say. <laughs> I'm gonna try really hard because I have been working working diligently to try and get ready for this for this trip. Anyway, this is an adorable pattern. I'm gonna see if I can get my that's one thing I don't have it set up quite yet. I'm going to go to the overhead on, um, this will be on Facebook and YouTube. And I'm going to show you this pattern close up. Whoops, wrong one. Here we Denise go. Denise was our first hello on here. And she says, howdy y'all. Oh, Denise. <laughs> hey, <laughs> thank you. Okay. Can you see this pattern? They're saying, yes, yes, you can. I believe in you. Yes, she can. You got to do it. Then. I got to do it. <laughs> I need to make them. <laughs> I, I need to make them so that I can roll up the pant legs. I want to roll up the pant legs when I walk along the edge of the water looking for shark's teeth. That's my goal. I'm going to. What if you put like a little tab inside that you can roll and then button? I was like just capri. thinking oh, that. Oh, I, I like that, that idea. That. Like on yeah, your exactly. sleeve. Uh huh. Just do a little bit. Oh, that's leg. a good idea. And then it could be capri pants in there. Mm -hmm. I like that. Or you that. could just do a zipper and you could just unzip. <laughs> unzip at any level, right? Yeah. <laughs> Where I could, she's saying I can put a zipper and just unzip it in, in any level. <laughs> Susan Webb says, so Sally, so. I know. You know, ever since uh, 
last last fall i i kind of lost my um i don't know maybe i lost i didn't have so much time and um so i got kind of behind and i wasn't i thought how did i ever do all of that for like however many weeks one one thing a week but i do need to do some sewing for myself and i have this cute fabric i have a lot of cute fabrics and then i mean there are some really really nice adult patterns out there and let's talk about we printed this because i i want to cut it out i want to tape it together and cut it out but we also sent it to the plotted, the plotted pattern, pattern the plotted pattern and with shipping and printing we didn't print the instructions we we didn't have them print instructions right no we, just the pattern we have them print the pattern all in all sizes seven dollars and what michelle it was less than eight dollars yeah less than eight dollars so totally worth it i love them they're quick and they they that that includes postage so and color in oh color. in color mm -hmm. yeah but we printed our own instructions and then i'm gonna tape this baby together this afternoon i think one of the hardest things for me um to sew for myself is that i actually have to take my measurements and face the truth mm. you know that's mm -hmm. that's really like i don't, I don't want to write down those numbers mm -hmm. <laughs> I, like oh i, I want to go by what i think it, it should be and but mm -hmm. th those clothes aren't going to fit so anyway how many of y'all sew for yourself and what pdf pattern companies do you like somebody put on regina Karish's, pretty sure it was on regina's um come sew with me the adult uh pdf pattern companies they like and i've and i printed them up there are several that they like and this is definitely is one of them the um styla uh pattern company and it's the adult part portion of little lizard king so anyway let us know which ones you like too and we're gonna start this is gonna be our number this is gonna be our first try at having you vote on something emma came up with a cute name it's called Customers. Customer creation, create a kit. Yeah, customer or customer choice. Customer, customer choice, create a kit. Yeah, customer Maybe choice, customer choice, create a kit. We're we're working on it. Ever since yesterday, we've been talking about it. It's going to be customer choice, create a kit. And I got the idea from um, Catherine at Bringing Sewing Back. If you go to her her Facebook page, Instagram page, she she's so creative. And um, actually, she's designed some patterns for this company. We got Linda Steinhoff says, I do so for herself. Good. Love Notions patterns yes. are my favorite. Love Notions. I have, and are they mostly knits, Linda, or not? Because I do know they have a lot of knits. Yeah. Let's see. She answers. Yeah. Um, anyway, Catherine has, she'll design, a, a, she just got finished designing a ball gown, and we put it in our newsletter today. And I like to watch her story because she will cut out the pieces lay them so, out yes, knits, oh, knits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then she had this the, the ball gown ended up being um sleeveless but she had made it created a sleeve based on a dress that she saw and was asking opinions and so then she would just change her dress up based on the vote and so i thought that'd be kind of fun to do probably with kids clothes but we're going to start with our first vote getting the feel for it on these pants so looking forward to seeing if you believe in me or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, Facebook does. Good. <laughs> All right. I should ask which, what should I make it out of? Because we're not putting that on there, but I'm going to, I should show you this again. I'm going to go we to. We can put it on there. Oh, okay. All right. So we have, we have a deeper khaki this has this has kind of a cool I don't know what you call it it's a, it's a neat feel it's a tight weave but it's not not heavy and um, this just came in and then we have this more loosely woven blue and it's kind of a chambray weave because it's got white in one direction actually it's blue and white in both directions I think yep and then the other one is is a lighter one an oatmeal linen and so 
Tell me where I should start. We got another suggestion of okay. patterns. It's called Style Style Art Patterns out of Australia. Oh, okay. Vicky likes that. All right. Style Art Patterns out of Australia. Okay. So I'm gonna put this in here. And one of our our question um, this week was about do you alter do you alter patterns and um, actually your answers were very interesting um, a lot of you don't alter patterns at all somebody only modifies patterns if if it's by mistake and I was like yeah that's a one way to modify patterns it's like whoops I made a boo boo so let's see what we can do with that and um, I got a question for you okay I'll take a question um, can they see the fashion show when you're done with your ah. pants? <laughs> Becky said you have to do this. Are you gonna be nice? You're gonna be nice to me. <laughs> you know I'm not. I'm not that excited about like Catherine. Catherine is like this beautiful, slim, awesome girl that everything looks wonderful on. So um, that's that's like so different. Maybe you can get some beautiful beach pictures. Maybe, yeah. maybe, Before yeah. Show us. Yeah, okay, <laughs> all right, okay. Well, the other thing I've been working on, um, and I showed you before, was this um, nightgown for ladies called Victorian Dreams. And this is another one I'm going to try and finish before I go. But this is, this is the yoke right here. That's a yoke. And the fabric is this beautiful legacy rosebuds. Beautiful. And so we were talking about the sleeve and making some kind of a, a flutter sleeve or something to cover, cover up my arms. And um, I've been working on sleeves for other garments. And I kept thinking about this and how to, how to change, this, uh, change this sleeve pattern. Because this pattern has a two-part sleeve that's a tulip a tulip sleeve and I'll show you the see this this is one part of it and then the other part overlaps so it's two of these and then the other one comes around here and overlaps and I thought I don't really want to do it that way and so what I did I did this last night finally this is right here is the center of the shoulder this is the center so i folded it on that center folded it down and um, then i cut that out on the fold so that's the center and so that's what i figured this this is supposed to fit between let's see how does that go like this I have spatial relations issues. Here we go. This is my shoulder. This goes under the arm like that, and then that's that's gathered. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that would be a nice, comfortable sleeve. And um, <coughs> I'm going to go to the overhead for a minute and show you how I how I figured that one out. So here here is the sleeve and the overhead. It's a funny shape, right? But this is. This is on the straight of a grain here. So I lined it up on my, on one of the lines on my cutting board. And then I folded, folded it back at the center, at the center of the sleeve. And so then this is half of a sleeve. And so I, ju I just put that on the fold and, and cut out my, cut out my sleeve, cut out two, two of them on the fold. And then I have this pre-made sweet little ruffle pre-made ruffle when we were talking about putting it maybe across the yoke or whatever but I I tend to be a little more simple and I made this sleeve and gathered it up just a little while ago and it has it has just that tiny little ruffle at the bottom are they we okay mm -hmm. okay and so that this will fit and this yeah mm -hmm. so it comes it's above the elbow and it's loose so it's nice and cool 
and then I can fit it right in that armhole because it's going to have the same armhole shape as my as my um, gown pattern so I know that's going to fit in the armhole but anyway I loved it with the with the ruffle so I'm going to show you how I added that ruffle Becky says inverted pleat in the center of the sleeve oh yeah you could do that true you could put an inverted pleat what I did with this I'll just bring a piece right here I sewed let's say and actually what I did I did here too is I straightened the sleeve at the bottom I didn't I didn't curve it up in the center I, I straightened it but I sewed took my bottom of my sleeve and the ruffle and sewed right sides together like this see if you can see that overhead yeah right sides together and I'll show you on here Sue says, so the sleeve doesn't have a front and a back? No, and, and I was looking for that, but it does not have a front and a back. Most sleeves should have a front and a back, but this is loose and it's gathered, and I think it's not going to matter that much. But a lot, I'll go back over here. You'll find, in my opinion, there are a lot of PDF patterns that don't change the back and the front. They put things on the fold, and that's really not how our bodies are made, and honestly... A sleeve shouldn't be drawn that way but I mean if they're drawn that way I I use it that way and so haven't had too many complaints but but with, so with the ruffle I sewed right sides together and then um, oh, I, Vicki says um, she forgot style arc is on sale at Amazon this weekend oh good okay you style arc on sale at Amazon yeah then I went to the serger and I surged this. I surged this ruffle. And right through the, the um, sleeve, the bottom of the sleeve and the ruffle, I surged it and then turned it, turned it right side out and pressed it. And then I just went to, went back to the machine and top stitched it. So that seam is surged and um, top stitched up so it won't, it won't flip, it won't flip back. Anyway ready-made ruffles so easy to work with so easy sally how similar was that sleeve to the sleeve that you added to that dress well it turned out to be very different actually okay and so i can show you that let me get this out of the way i made um Ella. I've got an Ella and an Emma granddaughter and I'm always having to stop and think which name am I talking about. This dress, it's really I made it as a nightgown. So this is, this fabric is from Spain and it has shirring. As you can see, you really can't tell very much in the fabric because this has not been washed yet and see how it's kind of loose, but it has rows of like a really fine elastic thread and when it's washed it does pull up and it looks so cute and like on the skirt look at this looks really really cute on the skirt where it pulls up anyway what happened then um ella is 10 and so i made this i made it was sleeveless and she brought it she said Gigi, i wonder what we can do it pulled it pulled it in just a little too far and she felt a little uncomfortable like especially when we went to the mountains and her boy cousins were there and she's like I feel I, I feel nervous about it so I thought well what can I do one of her other dresses I added a ruffle to the shoulder and so I was looking at this and I thought hey what about we, we, we had talked about a flared sleeve so this is really pretty much a flared sleeve but I didn't have any pattern for it but I think that gives enough of an extra width without being tight or anything that it covers up anything that might she think thinks might be showing right and so um, I'll show you how I did that because this pattern that dress pattern also, I love that Ella brings it back and it's like, um, could you? <laughs> I know. She <laughs> brought this one back. She brought my, the other one back and said, 
I'd really like a ruffle on the shoulders because it has a ruffle around the bottom and, and um, it was in our newsletter today, but not with a ruffle, but I, I added the ruffle and it's really, it, it was actually really cute. Lady who knows what she likes. I know. <laughs> I'm like, girl, can't believe I got this ready for you to wear to church. And now it's like, hey, can we change it up? But anyway, <laughs> this, I, I used the top of this pattern. This is McCall's 7948. 7948 and I will show you let me go to the overhead here and I'll show you a close up of this I think if you have if you have a bodice that you can work with you can make almost anything like you could cut the neckline down some you could make it like I, t I cut the shoulder seams in more when I made this um, I've got a couple other oh here I, I have two more the two more tops I made over this pattern this this is one of them in here and so this needs a skirt and maybe maybe ruffles at the shoulder I don't know so I'll show you this so with with her because she's a girl and not a lady I use a lady's pattern but I cut I cut the shoulder seam in I'll bring that down so you can see I cut the shoulder seam in so it fit her at the shoulder because I had a I had a um, see where it is we call it a muslin it doesn't matter what fabric you make it out of but I just I cut it out I cut the pattern out and then um, tried it on her and then I drew all over it and so you can see I had to cut in here took it in here and so I just took my sharpie and wrote all over this top and so then I redrew the pattern so that I knew that that top was going to fit. But the one thing that I got on her, and I showed it before, I made the armholes a little too low. They came down a little too low right here. So then I have altered the pattern again. And next time I cut it out, I shortened the pattern from the shoulder to the, the bottom of the armhole. I shortened it here. And that doesn't, doesn't do anything to the size anywhere it just brings it up so it's not so low under the arm and um, so I think this is going to be my perfect pattern but when when talking about putting a sleeve in this garment I thought how am I going to do that because this this is the sleeve pattern for that for that dress so I kept thinking about it. I think about these things and then finally get to a point where I feel like I can do it. So I traced, I traced this sleeve using, um, using a pattern tracing paper. I traced the sleeve on here. It looks a little shredded. There, it's shredded, Michelle. isn't it? Yeah, I know it. I should have traced it again to show you what it looked like. But you can see I trace that sleeve onto pattern tracing paper like this. And so then I know that the armhole is the right length. I mean, the, the length of this around the sleeve is the same length as around my arm, um, around the armhole of this dress because this is the pattern from that. So then what I did was I brought it to, I brought it out here to my cutting board and I sliced into this sleeve. You can see all these slices like this. I'm going to lay it on here and go to the overhead. Well, Lonnie says she just finished that pattern for herself. And she took some of the fullness out of the skirt. Oh. She said it was too full for her. Yeah. Yeah. Let's look at that. So here is the sleeve on the overhead. And so it was like this. And it's kind of a straight sleeve. Well, I wanted... I want it to go into my armhole, but I want it to be flared. And so I sliced into it and just started spreading it out. I spread it all the way out. And I didn't have any kind of formula because a lot of times I just wing something, especially if I'm doing it for, for the grandkids because they, they can bear with me. And so this, let's see. This is what I ended up with, and I'll show you. I ended up with this guide, and I, I angled it way out like this, 
way out here. And then I redrew my, my flared sleeve. But I wanted it to have I wanted it to have a little bit of gathers here just so that she had plenty. Because then I couldn't decide should it go all the way under the arm or should it just go to here. And so I ended up making it go just to where the where the curve of the sleeve of the armhole. I brought it to the like a like a angel sleeve. I brought it to here. And I already had my dress finished, so I ended up serging it and then pinning it in and I just top stitched I top stitched it on because it's it's a nightgown, you know? It's not going to be bad. But look at that how I went from this straight sleeve to a flared flutter sleeve. Well, Jeanette calls it cut and spread is a cool way to mark. Yeah, it. yeah. And so then it doesn't have a lot of gathers, but it has a lot of flare. And so um, then I just curved curved it to a point here instead of instead of bringing it down like the underneath part of a sleeve, I curved it to a point on each side so I could gather all the way up to the point and then fit it in. I measured, I laid the the blouse the the dress I laid them together and marked so I started at the same place on each on each side and then she hasn't seen it yet but I think she's gonna like it so I was thinking of putting a little trim on the bottom but as usual I'm in a big hurry <laughs> <laughs> and I took a little trim we have a cute little um Clooney edging from Spain and and I thought well I'll put, I'll put it on that and just zigzag that on but the problem is I really, if it's going around a curve like this, you really have to softly ease it or gather it or else it cups in and it doesn't look pretty. So, um, are you driving? Am I driving? You could sew it by hand I know. on the way there. I know. No. Well, I don't <laughs> think I'm driving. I'm depends on how many kids are riding with us, but, um, yeah, but anyway, it, that little Clooney edging did not have, I tried to pull a thread, I really did, because I thought it would be really sweet with it edging, but um, it didn't have, it didn't have a thread that you could pull in the header like a French lace does, and so I thought, we're just going to serge it, turn it under, and we end up with something that she's enjoying, it's cool. Mary Lynn says, that's exactly how we redrew patterns in college, slash and spread. Oh, all right. Well, I feel good about that then. <laughs> good. So now I have, slash and spread. yeah, don't be afraid to try things. Um, I, I know I'm not, I'm not afraid to try things. I just have to think it through for a long time. And Lori says she loves to ace the trace because that helps her experiment. It does. It does. Unfortunately, we can't get that one anymore. We might have one or two left, but we do have another pattern tracing um, paper that works really, really well, and it works a lot like AC tracing. You can actually sew it. You can actually sew on it, and and you know, take your stitches out. You can sew on it like a pattern, like you a piece of fabric. You it. can sew a muslin with it. Try it on, and and it works. It works really great. The so, Swedish tracing paper. Yeah. Oh yeah, the Swedish tracing paper. We have that on rolls, and there's another one on the um, S. I, I hate to say the S. It's the ST area. Um, With the stabilizer. Yeah, stabilizer. Mm -hmm. so stabilizer area. Mm -hmm. It's really called, I, and it's really called the STD shelf. But you know, you hate to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's like okay. STA pattern ease tracing. Yeah, it's STA. Oh, some of them are it's <laughs> stabilizer shelf A, B, C, and D. And so when we have one that comes to D, it's it's like the skew is STD, and you're like, oh man, I wonder if anybody ever thinks <laughs> that's really terrible. <laughs> that's terrible. Well, it's dash D. Not yeah, dash D. I'll show you another. So when my girls are, are here and they and they're telling you things that they like, I I couldn't believe this this is a little pattern that was made this pattern was made years ago by Sally Goodwin. And um and she gave us permission to to redraft her pattern. She's got a boys pattern too and and uh, we've been working on this. Do you think I can remember the name of this pattern? Michelle, you've been working on it. It's been a while though. What is it? Missy. Missy. This is Missy by Sally Goodwin. Sally Goodwin 
is a lovely lady from Augusta, Georgia, and she taught smocking for years and years and years in this um, in this area. And she had shops, and then she had a knitting shop too. She has she's really talented. But this is her Missy pattern, and so I made this up, and never did hem it. But I made it to fit Farron. It probably fit June by the time we get get it finished. But when Emma, my almost 15 year old, saw it, she said, I love this style. I'm like, you do? You gotta be kidding me. With the ties on the shoulders, she said, yeah, I love that. And so I thought, well, I started looking around and, and so then I found this nightgown pattern. Let me pull it out. Meg said, did she also have smocking designs and patterns? Yes, she did. So, and her name is Sally, S-E-L-L-Y, Sally Goodwin. Yep. Cheryl said, I would like that little number for myself. Right. <laughs> well, she has it in, in adult sizes too, right? Didn't she have, mm -hmm. or yeah. were they adult or teen? They were adult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Michelle is our graphic designer, and she's been working on the, on the patterns. And anyway, I thought all I need is just the band across the front and, um, and then put ties on the shoulders. And I came across this pattern. It's a vintage simplicity 5179 5179 and I'll go to the overhead and show you 5179 you can see that has a square neck and a ruffle and how I got from this to this who knows except that I was thinking if I took the yoke the yoke of the pattern and just cut that across there and then I had the armhole then I could figure out the best way to fit Emma and then add ties but she had told me that she loves this fabric finders fabric and even that surprised me the girls were saying it's kind of a 60s vibe right and I thought then maybe I'm gonna try it with sleeveless and make it into a little top and so I cut it out and I haven't hemmed it yet, but I've been holding it up to everybody here. And she could wear that with a cute little pair of white shorts or white jeans or something like that. And hopefully, hopefully she's going to like it. But they have been loving ruffles around the armholes. And so we're going to give this a whirl. So this is, I use a simplicity pattern, but any anything with a square yoke, you could add this ruffle. You could add that ruffle to it. And um, I was thinking of doing the, the ruffle out of the same fabric, but I cut it out last night, and this is a pre-made ruffle. So, again, <laughs> true to form, I'm going to do the easiest and quickest thing. And I think white looks pretty it's with so this. It's so nice with that. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty. Mm -hmm. So this is a fabric finder's print. And also, I sent her both colors I said Emma which one of these did you like and she said oh I like them both <laughs> so I couldn't read I think she's Gigi, gotta make two. I know maybe I'll make one for her sister so anyway I started with the yellow of course I um, I cut down like who, who was saying that that dress that one dress that McCall's dress was a little too full Mm -hmm. This, I knew this nightgown was way full, so I cut, I actually cut it down to about half of what it called for. She might still think it's too big, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. This just fits over the head, and uh, she's going to the beach, so she might throw it on over her swimsuit or something. Who knows? Who knows? We'll try it. But these pre-made ruffles are tremendous time savers. I know they're doubled I think they're both cut on the bias so they so they shape really pretty and uh, this is a tiny one with the roses and then this is the eyelet and we actually have we have this eyelet also in a bundle that matches this so anyway Anon Salem says been missing y'all oh <laughs> thank you so don't be afraid to try vintage patterns don't be afraid to um change them up like this doesn't have anything sleeveless but you know you can figure it out 
and like this I haven't sewn down the inside yet but I just cut a bias and uh, and did a bias facing under the arms what a great question where do you purchase your pre-made ruffles from oh Fabrics? guess what <laughs> we make these and we sell these so we have these here the pre-made ruffles and for those two specifically, like you said, we've got the fabric that matches the Yes, well. we do. We have the fabric that matches both of these. And so that way, this is, we call this uh, Legacy Romantic Rosebuds or Romantic Roses, something like that. And then this is an eyelet. Yeah. And those will both be linked in the video. Yes. Yeah, Emma is linking all, all of the things that we're talking about, so... Let me put this over here and this over here. All right. On um, Thursday, we uh, sent a newsletter with, we're doing tidbits, Thursday tidbits with Sally. And, um, and every, every Thursday, you know, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to do an easy one this time. Something I can write really, really quickly. And, and I think it's going to be so simple. And then I start researching and I'm like, oh my goodness, there's so much to this. For instance, I'm, I'm writing one about Sutash braid. Well, who would know that there are, there's so much to Sutash braid? Um, we just, we know that people use it to decorate like a doll dress or decorate a collar or something. But there's so much on there, it's going to take me a while to write it. But they make jewelry out of Sutash braid. They make buttons and they make frogs where they're tied in a knot and all that. So it's really interesting. Well, then somebody had talked about uh, the repeat of a fabric. And I thought, well, that's, that's a good thing to talk about. And so I started looking up information about fabric repeats. Now this... Um, this is from patternanddesign.com and I, I've just printed out. It's very, it's very well done. But the, so much was, was on Google for students, design students that were wanting to create fabric designs. And so they talked about the repeats and what was important about them and, and the different kinds and all that. And then a lot of the other information was from people that do, um, home deck. Because you know when you have a sofa covered or a chair covered, the repeat of the print is really, really important. And you have to know how much extra you need to get to get things to match up. And, and then the, the pillow cushion has to match where the, the bottom part of the sofa is upholstered. And so all that is, is important. Well, mostly we deal with garments, but I'm going to have, I'm going to have Emma join me. <laughs> I'm going to have Emma join me, and we're going to talk about these. It's, they're kind of fun. We had the girls pick some fabrics, and we're going to see if we can figure out what these, what these fabric repeats are. So a fabric repeat, a printed repeat, is, from, is a measurement from the top of the design to where that same top of the, de the design starts again. And usually it's in inches. And so I'm going to start okay. putting these up All here. Right. So there's one that's called a full drop block pattern repeat and you can see it's just every one of these lines is a repeat and then there's one that's called a half drop and so it's almost like they took one of the rows and moved it halfway down and so it's like halfway in between like this one and then these are probably the, some of the most common this one is called a brick pattern repeat and so it's kind of like when you lay bricks you have two here and then you start over here and then you have three and then you have two more and then you have three and so they they overlap offset. they're offset that's right they're offset then this one is called a diamond pattern repeat and you can see it's actually in in rows like that the next one is very similar to the diamond, but they call it, how you pronounce it, O-G-E-E, -E. O-G-E. And, but that one is like a diamond, but the edges are rounded. So this one, I like this one the best. 
This is called a tossed or a random pattern repeat. Mm -hmm. Now this is probably the easiest to sew with because you don't have to think so much about where everything starts and ends. And then this one is called a stripe pattern repeat. And so, anyway. Okay, I'm now. I can't even remember test. what all they are. I know. <laughs> So yeah. we're going to... When Sally asked me if I wanted to come do this, I said, yeah, I'll stand beside you and ask you what they are. Yeah. I will, I'll do that. We're going to see if we can figure out the repeat on these things. <laughs> All right, what, what do we have here? All right, so let's start with this one. This feels really good, too. That's pretty. This is pretty. So I don't I know what they picked out. Okay, now, can you see it? Michelle, what's is your... Is the diamond? It looks like a diamond. Pattern. It's either diamond or... Or what's that one that's... Or is it brick? Should we set these all out in front of oh, us? It, it might be brick. brick. Yep, it is it brick? brick? Brick pattern repeat? Y'all can guess too. Okay, but we ought to measure what the repeat is. Dilly yep. Paris says diamond. Diamond? Yay, one for me. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we'll start with the, where's the top of one? So we want to go. You're going to go to the. That's to the rain, to the little water drop. Okay, here we maybe go. Maybe not. Maybe we That's shouldn't do that. Let's start at the top of a <laughs> Maybe like, let's start. Maybe we'll start in an easier okay, place. Let's start. We're gonna start here, and and this is exactly mm -hmm. like that. So this has a, this has an eight inch repeat. This is the eight inch repeat. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's a is a diamond or a brick. Well, see, it does go diagonally. So mm -hmm. and there's also. Um, oh, it also has a jacquard weave. It in. does. Uh huh. That's kind of interesting. I was curious. Anna agrees. She says mm -hmm. yes. All right. That's the first thing I saw on the shape when y'all held it up with the diamond. Sometimes, if you hold it, you know, you're way back and you hold it up. Maybe you can that's tell part better. of yeah, yeah what helps. All right. What's next? Y'all are right. close to it. Let's I think see. this one is going to be. This is a liberty. We're going to have to see some more of this. Okay, you guys. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Billy, well, the last one, Billy said diamond and brick are so similar. I picked diamond because it looks taller and wider. But that was the previous one, not this one. I think uh, this, this is that one half. Brick. Well, and also oh. it's that uh, half drop pattern repeat. Yeah. Do you think half drop pattern repeat? Well, it might be yes. because I see there's the top this here. This is like right in the middle. And right in the center, yeah. Of these yeah, two. that's probably mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So that's right in the middle. Okay, so should we see what's the repeat? What's the measurement on this? This one? is a liberty. That's what it says. This is has a very white background, I know. considering I know the other backgrounds. This is a okay. really pretty one. So it can't be. F okay. Always go with the largest repeat. Go with the largest repeat. Okay. So it's not from. Here to here, is it? Because that's half of that. Mm -hmm. It's going to have to be. Okay, where is the repeat yeah. on this? <laughs> um, is it? I guess the top of the big one to the top of. Are they the, all the same size? They do look like they're the same size. Yeah. Mm hmm. Or top. could it be from the middle of here to the middle of here, and maybe. then that includes that? Yeah, maybe. It doesn't matter if it's the top or the middle, but that way. Mm -hmm. So would that be? Half that would be half drop, right? This yeah. one's half drop, mm -hmm. so that's like six, six inches. Whoa. But the the bigger the repeat and the more noticeable, then you have to think about: Do I need extra fabric? Mm -hmm. But if you're making yeah. a small size child size you can fit both of your big pieces side by side on a I can handle this one. <laughs> I'm good with a plaid let's see here so this is this is an even plaid that means it can be it can be cut out in both directions and so honestly so the repeat on this is from the top of this plaid to the top of the next one and it's about an inch and a half so it's very very little yeah but an even an even plaid you can if you cut your pattern piece out in the other direction it would still the plaid's the same 
right, oh, we got a strike. Okay, we got a strike. So I'm thinking you have to find the biggest flower on. Let's see, let's hold it a little bit. So would you find the teal rounds or something? Like that thick teal This rounds. goes mm -hmm. across this. And then there's So that's halfway. These are mm -hmm. these are halfway down, aren't they? So then half up and half down. Mm -hmm. Woo! Yep. So this is a this is the same as this. Mhm. Mm so maybe from here to here. You guys correct me if we're, if we're wrong. So here to here is a 6 inch repeat. Mm -hmm. It looks the same. I think that's right. Whoa. <laughs> I love this one too. This is a fun print. That it is. It's cute. All right. So, let's go back. We'll do another floral. I wonder if we have any tossed ones. I don't know if we have any tossed ones. Okay, now this one, let's see if this is upside down and right side up. We'll hold it up so you can see. What do you think? This is soft. This is like a satin Ooh, batiste. This feels so good. Okay. Sort of brick. Maybe. Let's see. Let me get it straight. Yep. Here. This. Is that the same? No. That's different. Oh, you know what? Is this one? Maybe it is a toss. It might be because this flower, that petal's facing down. This one's facing up. This one's facing up. This one's facing. And then sometimes that they're one's reversed this on, way. The, yeah. on so, the thing. I think this one might be tossed. And the vines are different over here. Do we have any well? any flowers like this? Yeah, any some are coming down. Mm -hmm. So you could you could mm -hmm. go and. And so those, th they're coming up here. Yeah, you'd have to really study mm -hmm. it. So on this one, all these, this flower is going up. Mm -hmm. This bouquet is going up. And then these are going, well, okay. So these are going to the side. These are going to the side. So, so that, that might be That might be it. Right? That might be it right there. Okay, start with that flower right there. Okay. And go down to... Need another hand. Let's yeah. see. It's about 12 inches. About, yep. About 12 inches. Hey, this would make a nice nightgown. Oh, this would be Man. so nice. It's very soft. Is it, it is soft? so soft. It is soft. This is a satin batiste mm -hmm. fabric. Oh, my goodness. It's a really pretty, like, kind of a soft, blushy yeah. sheen. So, Becky says, are the repeats different horizontally or vertically? Oh, or? they are different horizontally and vertically. We, we showed in our... Um, in our newsletter, one with the children, the Bell and Bell and Bell and Boo. Bell and Boo. Is that it? We've got. I always because there's a pattern company that's really close. It's Boo and Lou. Boo and Lou, yeah, Bell and Boo, mm -hmm. and uh, and so there there is a horizontal mm -hmm. re repeat. That's the beach hut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a horizontal repeat. Sometimes it matters, sometimes not. But I think it matters if you can really see it because you don't want to have something like a little offset and think ooh that's that's off center mm -hmm. because you like I was at the doctor's office this week getting a, the eye checkup and I wanted to get up and straighten their pictures you know it's mm -hmm. like that's what you want to do you want to go to somebody and say we need to straighten that mm -hmm. you cut your dress out wrong <laughs> 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 but I saw that that picture was just like ah, I just mm -hmm. wanted to go up half an inch yeah. Now this, you think this is the even or uneven plaid? Here's your question. Here's your test. We'll ask. I feel like because you asked, I want to say uneven. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right. But I'm trying to figure out where it's uneven. Well, so let's see. The only, like you, see how it has two teal um, threads at the top mm -hmm. and then a heavy raspberry, heavy raspberry, mm -hmm. and then these four little dark red. Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't have it on the other side of it. Oh, I see. see okay. If it was yep. even, then it would yep. be something in the center and then it would go out and it would be exactly the same on every side. So this is an uneven plaid, both horizontally and vertically, but still it doesn't have a big repeat. The repeat mm -hmm. really goes from these, that top teal line to the next one, which is two and Two and a half inches, so it's only two and a half inches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a beautiful linen. This is cute. Mm -hmm. 
This is I'm what Christy it. wanted me to put on myself. I'm like, mm, no. This will be pretty on you. Yeah, you like pink. And yeah, you Not look great in pink. pink. <laughs> be like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> You need to do it. Who cares? It needs to be sand. If I if I make it like, hey, that's what I need. That's the sand color. Then I camouflage right into the beach. <laughs> I always tell people at the beach, you're never gonna see those people again. So if you need no to worries. wear a bathing suit, get you some sun. Go do it. <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah. Sally, you want to talk about these? Yeah. So we, why don't you tell them about what's going on here? Okay. Because you so, like to bake. I do. So um, we had several of our Fat Daddios, cake pans, pie pans, all different types of pans. They were in a storage unit. And so um, this week, Sally and Christy got out there and they brought some pans in and decided to put some on the website. Um, and we have, I think that, there that was around that came, eight. Came in and she's a, a cake baker. She's a baker. She's yeah. Very and excited and she bought was. a lot of them. Yeah, so yeah. she came by and got a bunch of pans and also we've had a couple of bakers see some of our uh, molds that yeah. have been in our dollar mm -hmm. deals and they realized, "Oh, this is this is a good deal." Well, and they the bought same, that one from Greenville and she bought the um, dowels, the plastic mm -hmm. dowels and she bought like I don't know, 50 50 boxes mm -hmm. the first time. And then, um, because that was all we had online, mm -hmm. and I, so I called her back and I said, we have more. We have like 400. Oh, no, I'm fine for right now. And then she got them, and didn't she get another 250? I think so. And mm -hmm. if you saw pictures on, um, I think we put them on, maybe I put them on my own, my own Facebook page. But the boys were down here, my grandsons, and they were counting them. And so they were stacking them up here, counting them. And that, that was a <laughs> great summer math activity. But anyway, these are awesome, mm -hmm. people, because look at the how these are three inch. Nice. Yeah. This is a ten by three cake pan. This is a twelve by three. That's a huge cake. It is. How do you get it done in the middle? That's what I wonder. Cook it forever. <laughs> yeah. Oh, somebody said put it on a little bit lower temperature, right, and then it gets done. I in can the see that. This is called a, what, pizza... This is a pizza, pizza peel. peel cake lifter. This thing weighs a this ton. This is heavy duty. Yeah. If you have one of those good um, brick ovens. Yeah, that's pizza. right. Yeah. That's right. Scoop oh, it I out. Use it in my regular oven. Oh, you do? Do you? This yeah, is very like nice. When, when they say to put the pizza on the rack. Right yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. How are you going to get it off of there? And get yeah. it off. That's a good idea. So for, for everybody, every order that has one of these in it, we're giving... Um, an apron. This is an adult size apron, and it's they're really nice. So nice navy blue apron. It says Cake Slayer. Mm -hmm. These are great. So I know it's guys not, or girls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, guys or girls. It's not really necessarily sewing, but um, we when we purchased the this um, it was family cooking and crafts, mm -hmm. and so we had a lot of crafts and it was like. We got a lot of cooking stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, we had a big rectangular pan, and Christy said, oh, we love having that pan for whenever they grill to take food between the mm -hmm. house and out to the grill. Mm -hmm. And so I got my dad one, okay, and so. I and he was so excited because he was planning on grilling that weekend, yeah. and he's like, that's perfect. Because then so heavy got duty. something designated. Really, really nice. They're very nice yeah. pans. Sue said you can use the pizza peel to stack large cakes. Oh, oh that makes sense. Right. Yep. Yeah, we, we had some very interesting mm -hmm. things in this purchase. But yesterday, yesterday we got our shipment in. Did you see our, our story? <laughs> <laughs> we, we ordered, um, the, we'll, have to, we'll send you pictures, but all the buttons from a, a store in New York City that the man is retiring, the man and his wife, they're retiring, and he's going to be renting his building. He owns the building, and he's mm -hmm. going to rent his building. And so one of my vendors up there knows that I love buttons. Mm -hmm. And so I, he said, I think I have a lead on some buttons. And he really did, didn't mm -hmm. he? Anyway. Just when, what we've seen so far. They're, they're really pretty they buttons. They are beautiful. I'm so excited to go through. They're beautiful. Mm -hmm. So fifth, there were 15 boxes. And they weighed like 150 to 200 mm -hmm. and something pounds each. And <laughs> it was like 2,100 pounds. To, mm -hmm. Wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yep. It was a big... 2,100 pounds of buttons. They're really beautiful. And mm -hmm. over the next 
50 years we're going to be putting them online. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we what won't be got? here next week. We've got a giveaway. Oh, yes, we've we got a giveaway. giveaway. Yeah, right. Sally's going for some R&R oh, &R at the beach, so yeah, I, she will not be here on Friday. I was going to show the, the Lizzie and the Sophia for little girls. They each have the square neck and the square yoke, and they could be turned into this be right perfect here for a little girl. You could make a you could make a, a top or a dress and put a ruffle all the way around the this this be so uh, armholes cute. and yeah, I think it'd be really mm -hmm. cute. So I did pull these down. So I love the square neck. Them. And then we have a drawing. And right down here. Okay. So yesterday's giveaway was a very lazy giveaway on our part because we got 2,000 pounds of buttons. Right. So uh, we are going to draw for a, two winners of a $25 gift card. All right. Go ahead. You want me to go first? Yeah. Okay. All right. I feel like I shouldn't look. I know. <laughs> All, right, see. All right. Connie Hively. Have a wonderful weekend. I will be smocking a bishop for friends, new baby girl. Oh, congratulations, that's neat. Connie! Aww. And we will be um, contacting you to send you your gift card. I'm not supposed to look or read, right? I'm like, hey, who is that? Okay, and one more. We've got um, Becky Ryan Calvin. Thank you for the chance for a gift certificate. I modify patterns all the time. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes I Frankenstein two or three together, and sometimes I just draw what I want to change onto a piece of freezer paper or interfacing. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right, thank you very much, and um, we'll see you on the 7th with uh, Connie Palmer. Bye, y'all. All right, I'm going to go over here and turn off. <laughs> well... Thank you very much, ladies.